I wanted to ask you about growing up on the farm. I understand that was an integral part of your development as a young lad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've. Uh, it's my life. That's, yeah, that's who I am uh, through and through. Uh, that's yeah, where I come okay, from. Well, I don't think anywhere you take me, anywhere you shake me, uh, you're not going to take that away. Yeah, it'd be nice too if you want to do that. That'd be great. Yeah. Give you a quick story here, all right? Don't people. Sorry. You ever meet Ben Hartson? Yeah. Yeah. Ben is kind of from Silicon Valley. He's been told to grab the third round. They said, "What's it like being the star of the family?" My brother works for John Deere. That makes sense. Yeah. Hey, does anyone ask you about switching to edge rusher? Uh, no, but I mean, they've talked about basically like if I can help in different spots like that, as far as I can help, if I'm capable to help defensively, and there's, I mean, there's no doubt about it, I can help where you want me to help. And do you, I mean, do you prefer playing defense over offense? Or no, I mean, I, like, I love playing tight end, uh, but I mean, then again, I'm just there to help whatever you do to win a ball game. Okay, does being here, you know, feel like a validation of that position change that you made? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, it's super exciting to be here. It's super exciting to be a part of this with everybody. And uh, just coming from where I come from, a small town like that, just it's humbling. It's cool. What's the draft process been like for you so far? Uh, just a lot of meetings, a lot of meeting people, a lot of just uh, basically proving who you really are to people and what they think. Uh, just trying to confirm thoughts and uh, or disprove thoughts, whatever people think. Did you, you and the fifth down the game so What's that? You knocked down the goal. No. Do you think that impressed the NFL scouts and you? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. The goal wasn't to impress the NFL scouts. The goal was to go out there with the rest of the guys and do it the right way at the end of it. Uh, I felt like sitting out of that game. Uh, I was advised to by agents, and uh, I just I didn't feel comfortable doing that. It's something I couldn't go to sleep at night if I was going to do that. You said you're your own person. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, in a good way, in a good way or another, yeah, maybe. Kate, are you doing all the workouts? Yeah, I'm doing everything. So what are you hoping the fact that show this team is either didn't show up on film or can maybe emphasize what you've already shown? I mean, the film's out there. The film is what it is. I'm just going out there. I mean, I'm doing this for, I owe it to myself to do this. I owe it to my family to do this. Uh, and you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it. But I'm going out there, I'm going to do everything. Okay, like best preparation style. Tossing hay bales or practicing? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been home for like, I've been in Dallas for two months, so I can't uh, attest to that, but I sure as hell like tossing hay bales more, so. Hey, what's it been like to, to be here with Tommy and Steve? It's been super cool. Tommy and Tommy actually trained in Dallas together. Uh, we stayed together through it, and uh, it's just having those two by my side, it's, it's been, those are my best, those are guys I'm going to go to the grave with over there. Are you doing what Steele's doing by telling teams that you guys are all in the package you and you got to go together? Uh, I'm not doing that. I didn't know that was a thing until now, but uh, that doesn't make, it doesn't surprise me coming from him at all. No, I, no, I didn't think that was, uh, no, no, not at all. think about your path, uh, I'm just ha I'm happy I stuck with it. I'm happy I stayed there. Uh, I think now, day and age, you're going you're gonna to find a lot of different things. Uh, you're not going to find anybody stay for that long and stick it out like me and Tommy did for in Steel, for example. Like you're just not going to find that kids are going to leave and want to play early. And don't get me wrong. I mean, we wanted to play early, but you know, we trusted what uh, they were preaching. So we bought into the program, and uh, we got where we are now. Okay. Say that again. Man, I, I think that I don't think you can measure what's inside of me. I don't think you can measure the kind of person I am. Uh, I don't think you can measure how good of a football player I'm just scratching the surface to really be. Kid, where do you think you? I'm going to do everything you want me to do, exactly how it should be done every single time with everything I got. Kid. No, I've not been to the Bengals yet. Yeah. Uh, uh, super cool. Uh, that was a great interview. Uh, I mean, those were my kind of guys in there. Uh, yeah, it went really well. So you feel like Ohio State's really prepared you for this moment, regardless if you came in as a defensive lineman, linebacker, or tight end? I think going to Ohio State gives you the best jump to start your life, start your NFL career, everything else. It prepares you for everything we could do here. Uh, Coach Mick, Coach Bailey, 
all the strength coaches. Like it's just those are re- those are relationships I'll have for the rest of my life and cherish forever. Dude, where do you think you where do you think you grew the most your last year at Ohio State? I think I've grown. I think the game slowed down for me. Um, I think I grew up to make, embrace the moment a little bit more and enjoy yourself instead of being always so tight and trying to think what's next, what's next. I mean, I'm still trying to take that step to be able to enjoy what you're doing. Did Keenan, did Keenan help yeah. elevate that a little bit? No, he's the worst at it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah, I met with them last night. Uh, another unbelievable meeting. Uh, it means so much to go back with CJ. I mean, we were captains together two years ago, and I mean, he was from... Rancho Cucamonga, California. I'm from Mansfield, Ohio. Polar opposite sides of the world. But I, I couldn't tell you how how much respect and how close I really was with that guy just for his pure knack of wanting to win. And my pure knack of wanting to win. Uh, I'd love nothing more than to go reunite with him. Right, I mean, then again, I mean, you're not going in the season looking to put up numbers. I'm looking to go win ball games. Uh, and doing what I did as a tight end at Ohio State, uh, I was happy with, uh, especially with all the weapons, like you say, around. But again, at the end of the day, it's really if I catch one ball, if I catch five balls, if I catch ten balls, like, if we're not winning ball games, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just be yourself. Uh, it's got you here this far, and stay true to what you know, and don't try and change just because you're in a different position. What does it mean for you to be able to take the Mansfield, right? Marcus Ohio has a lot of football talent, but there's not a lot of people coming out of Mansfield. What does it mean to you to be able to put that in a small town on the Mansfield? Right, so much. Uh, I mean, I didn't go to a private school like some of these guys did. Uh, I went to my public school, and we did special things there, football and basketball, and to be able to put put that to give that town a bigger name and tell people, hey, man, Lexington, Ohio, Mansfield, Ohio, like that's that's a place people know now, and that's I mean, super special to me because that's what raised me. Hey, you said your agents didn't want you to play in the Cotton Bowl. Was what happened with you a year earlier uh, in the Beach Bowl in your mind at all there? Obviously, you, you have an obligation, you thought, to your team, but also an obligation to yourself, your family, your future family. The obligation to the team was way I mean that that is obligation to myself and that obligation to myself was to stay true to what we know and if you asked me five years ago hey you get an opportunity you're going to go to the draft here but you got to skip this game I'd be like I'm not skipping that's not me I'm not skipping the game five years ago, I just want to get on the field and play and I'm not going to miss one opportunity doing that yeah I think I mean I see things through a different lens sometimes uh as far as angle wise, where backers are set, coverage wise, I mean, you kind of know how things are going to unfold since you've been over it a little bit quicker. What was it like watching the rivalry with Michigan kind of flip? Say that again. What was it like watching the rivalry with Michigan flip over the course of your time at Ohio State? And where do you think it stands right now? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't like you already. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, it's a good question. I, I think that we put a lot of effort into that. Uh, we came up short the last two years, three years now. Uh, uh, that hurts. That's something that's going to sting with me the rest of my life, and there's no doubt about that. Uh, I thought we turned over every stone we could to be able to do the, uh, win that ball game. Uh, yeah. They won it. Uh, I got nothing else to say, but that's, that's where we're at. What do you think the future of the, you know, with Ohio State, what they've done this off season? I mean, it looks like they've made good strides. Uh, but then again, I mean, it only comes down to that day. So uh, the best team on that day is going to win the ball game. Hey, Coach, let's you call one play. What do you call why? I'm probably calling a tight end screen uh, just because. I get the ball, get the ball out quick, and let's get rolling. Have you ever ran off? Tight end screen? Yeah. Do you have a dream draft scenario? No, I just, I, I'd be super happy. Uh, anybody gives me a chance to go play, uh, just, uh, I'll be happy as hell. Have you met the Steelers? I'm not. Cade, you said when we were talking before the, the Cotton Bowl, you kind of predicted that John Lee was going to have a big role. He's out there at the start of the game, and then I guess maybe just the way that game was unfolded. That was part of it. Look at anything you've seen from him in the last few months as he's headed into the spring that tells you what might be ahead. Uh, he's a very talented kid. Uh, I haven't been there, so I couldn't tell you exactly what's going on, but I know the kid has the talent to do it. If he gets his mind in the right place, he'll be good. Kate, what's the hardest part of farming and farm life? Hardest part? Yeah. 
you see, especially being away from it so long, even the some people would consider the worst days, I would consider it such a blessing to even be back there and do it. Uh, man, I think, I mean, I guess when something breaks, you look at those as like, those are bad days, but to me, that's just extra time. I'm spending my pops trying to figure something out and cobble something together. What's like something that breaks on the farm? Our feed grinder breaks quite a bit. It's a chain off the back that hangs off the auger swing. And it normally happens when I'm driving it, which is the worst, but yeah. What's the hardest part about being away from it, even though you love football, what right. do you do? Yeah, it just, I, I know that, I mean, to get where I want to go and be where I want to be in life is what I have to do. So uh, I FaceTime my family every single night. Uh, FaceTime my girlfriend every single night with my dog. Like, it's just, it's hard being away from those people. But uh, then again, I mean, that's a sacrifice you got to make to do what you got to do. What's your favorite chore on the farm? I love making hay. I love cutting hay. I love baling hay. You, 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 you love baling hay? Yeah. You're, the, you're a psychopath, man. Who loves baling hay? Everybody what, loves baling what do you, hay. What do you love about baling hay? It's just you. I mean, you're on the wagon. I mean, you're on the, as long as I'm out in the hay mow, I'll be all right. But uh, if I'm on the wagon stacking, I mean, that's it's just such. Those are memories you hold forever. I couldn't tell. I mean, like I, I haven't been there, but uh, I mean, it looks like they got a lot of talent in there. I mean, they're gonna, he's gonna get the best out of those guys, no doubt about it. And Sean Binks, uh, the GA there. I mean, he's he's gonna get the best out of everybody. I mean, he's unbelievable. That's another relationship I'll have for the rest of my life, right there. Yeah, I mean, that's all. I mean, that's always that's. That's branded on me forever now, and there's not, I mean, there's not a day I don't think like, hey, what are they doing today, you know what I mean? Like, you spend so much time and you put so much into a program that, uh, I mean, it's hard not to. Uh, it's so special. Uh, that's, I mean, my mom, my dad, my two younger sisters, like, it's just, it's it's very rare to see a family nowadays sit down at the dinner table every single night. I mean, there wasn't one time I can remember being home and there's not, everybody sitting at the dinner table and mom made a meal that night. No matter, we wait, we wait for everybody to get home from practice, it didn't matter. Uh, and that, that went a long way with me. Kate, is it? How surprised are you that Xavier isn't here? Yeah. Very. Uh, I'm very surprised about that, to be honest with you. Uh, I think he, but then again, he's the kind of guy, he's going to defy all odds no matter what. Uh, the kid's going to get on the team, he's going to do well, he's going to play for a long time. Did you talk about the importance of family. You still have family in the program now with Garrett coming in. Uh, what's it like to see him start his journey to last? Super cool. Uh, super cool. He texted me about a match earlier the other day about how it was going to go. Uh, I told him, man, just... It's, it's such a it's such small things looking back at it now it means so much and uh, it's super cool to see him going through that uh, you know, I think he's gonna do great there hey, when you come in and, no. okay coming in 2019 with Ryan starting his head coaching journey what did you see from him uh, as he grew as a head coach that maybe he wasn't doing in 2019 that you saw him doing even up to the I think Coach Day is an unbelievable person. I think he's an unbelievable mind, an unbelievable coach. Uh, I, there's so much, so much of what we did, uh, though we came up short multiple, multiple times. I think so much of what we did and who I am as a person now comes from him, especially on the ball field wise. I mean, he was a, he came up with the idea to come move the tight end in the first place. That was his thinking. And, I still, I mean, I respect the hell of that guy forever. He's never, ever not held his word with me, and that's, that goes a long way. What do you think are the biggest lessons you'll take away from your time at Ohio State that will translate to the next level? I just, my routine and how I handle my body, how I handle getting everything ready, uh, it taught you how to be, it taught you how to be a grown man. You see, uh, you train with other guys with other programs and stuff, and you just realize how special Ohio State really is to get me and Tommy and those guys, I mean, we're ready, like, we're grown men are ready to go to the next level, we'll be good there. How would you, just make sure you said before the teams will talk to you about where else you can play, is that just, like, in addition to being a tight end? No, I'm playing, I mean, I'm playing tight end, no doubt about it, like, that's right. it, like, but I mean, I, it's been jokingly brought up as in, hey, could you do this if we asked you to, and yeah, yeah. What is it like to be here with Tommy, Steele, Mike, Paul, Marvin, all these tough guys that you played with, what's that like just being with Terry? Super cool. I mean, you see where you grew up. I mean, you think about long nights, long days in the weight room. Uh, 
rough days out in the summer. Like, and to see us be here all together, uh, it's super special. I just wish the best for everybody. Hope everybody does well. Do you have any specific goals for this week? No, I mean, just go out there and compete. Uh, like I said, I owe it to myself to do this. I owe it to my family to do this. And I'm just, I mean, film's out there, so I'm, I'm excited. What do you see? What's that? Uh, like all, um, on the, at the combine? You said blocking was an issue? This seems to be a common thing. I'd be curious to why you said that, if you don't mind me asking. You got any examples? Yeah, I know. Everybody's got issues. I would agree with you a couple of times. But I'm here to tell you, old PPF or PFF, whatever the hell it is, they don't know my scheme. They don't know what the hell I'm doing out there. And not the point. But, uh, but yeah, that seems to be a common theme going on here. Uh, like I said, I mean, if you're not afraid to miss, uh, I'm not trying to move somebody. I mean, if you're not trying, if you're afraid to miss, I mean, you're not going to get nothing done. You're going to play passive. Uh, we were okay with that. Uh, you miss a couple. I mean, you miss one. You're trying to head hunt somebody. Uh, that's trouble. That's, I struggle with that sometimes. I get my head out in front of my shoulder sometimes. And, like I'm still playing defense and rather just make a solid block. But uh, the common thing behind we struggle block, and I think it's just, I think it's a misconception. I mean, yeah, I can think of fucking million blocks, but. <laughs> but then again, I mean, that's life. That's the way it goes. I mean, I'm, I'm it's always 100% effort, always full tilt, full time or something about it.